peoples of the Worldwide Federated Internet. What's good? Welcome, welcome to the Thinking. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. As I always say, you could be anywhere doing anything, but you have decided to take a little bit out of your busy day to stop by and listen to me. I greatly appreciate that. I'm trying to figure out a schedule for uploading to this podcast. I have my Bible podcast that I'm doing and I do that daily every now and again I'll miss a day depending on my schedule this podcast as I always said it's been harder to get to I'm trying to develop a strategy normally on my Bible podcast I've been definitely taking off Fridays so I might do some research for topics I want to discuss on the thinking and just post on Fridays and I'm also going to be starting, Lord willing, a video game podcast with my youngest son who's in college for video game development and one of his friends. So it's another podcast I'm going to start, hopefully, Lord willing. We'll see how all of that goes and how all of that works out. But I've enjoyed the podcasting space. It's kind of therapeutic for me. I'm a conversationalist. Being a conversationalist and having specific topics that interest me It's not always easy to find people who are interested in talking about the topics that interest you. It's actually kind of complicated. It's not as easy as some might think. There's been a lot going on in the news. A lot of things going on in the country, the United States, a lot of things going on in the world. And it seems like everything is topsy-turvy. Everything is upside down. It is like we're in complete clown world, like right out the gate official. With all of the podcasts I listen to um, across many different topics, the one thing that has always interested me when it comes to news and political commentary, I would not consider this podcast news. I'm not a news anchor. Now, I try to be as as legit as possible, as correct as possible when I discuss any sort of news item, but I'm not a journalist. Yeah, I will fully admit that I'm not a journalist. Not that I don't have an interest in making sure what I'm saying is accurate and true, but this is my opinion. That's what this is. My opinion is not fact. My opinion is not law. And what I found in this in this space of talking about politics and social issues is a lot of commentators. I'm coming to the conclusion that these people really do believe that their opinion is law. There's many people who have opinions that I respect, but they treat it as though if someone has a different opinion, it is like. Uh, they're the scourge of the earth. Like, how dare you see something differently than me? That's kind of crazy. There's an opinion space. Podcast is not really. I think this is this is what I think. This is random thoughts episode. I think some people who have a podcast believe that because they're sitting in front of a microphone and they sound good and maybe they have a pretty awesome set, they somehow thinks that that makes them legit or a person that everyone should listen to. I have opinions. I share them with you, the worldwide federated internet. These, these are the same opinions I share with my close friends. When we get into conversations, really for me, that's what this is. It's a conversation piece. I like to converse and podcasts really does give an outlet for people like me who like to converse because even though You're not here with me. The fact that I can relay my thoughts to you 
And in some ways, it kind of gives you a bully pulpit, right? Because most conversationalists don't like being interrupted when they're trying to get their thought across. This podcast allows for that. I'm going to share my thoughts and you're going to listen until I'm done. Maybe you turn me off because you don't want to hear anymore. But either way, you're hearing out what I'm saying. I like the podcast space. So amongst the things that's going on, I don't know how many of you listen to Joe Rogan. I know my boy Pete, if you're watching, he does not like Joe Rogan. I get it. I understand. I like Joe Rogan. I appreciate his content. Um, Of course, me and him don't align on a myriad of beliefs. I appreciate the fact that he has conversations with people that you wouldn't normally hear talk in long form. So you actually get to hear a lot of things that you wouldn't have heard otherwise. And I can appreciate that. I, I can respect what he brings to the podcast space. He is, whether you want to realize it or not, whether you want to recognize it or not, whether you want to accept it or not, Joe Rogan is the undisputed king of podcasts. If there's anybody of interest, uh, as far as worldly topics are concerned, he has access to interview these people. And that's really a great thing. You get to hear people talk. We've not, you know, not really heard, but there's Joe, there's drama at Spotify with people who believe Joe Rogan should be reined in because his conversations are, they don't have a leash. Maybe they do have a little bit of a leash being at Spotify and them paying him so much money. I think it's something like $110 million for an exclusive deal with Spotify. And realistically, I, I have a Spotify account and have had a Spotify account for years. As a matter of fact, when I set up this podcast, um, I, I share my podcast via Anchor. So I upload my podcast to Anchor. And Anchor shares the podcast with a bunch of different platforms. I believe Anchor was bought out by Spotify a year and a half ago or something like that. So my podcasts are on Spotify, but I've had a Spotify account for years that I never used. I did not even have the app on my phone. When Joe Rogan announced that exclusive deal, part of the reason I downloaded Spotify so I can listen to his podcast. So I'm sure there's many out there like me that wouldn't have really given the the Spotify podcast space the time of day. But because Joe Rogan is there, I'm in. I'm here. I'm listening. What does he have to say? I, I want my access to those podcasts. I want to hear what's going on with the people he's interviewing. Um, so moving forward in the future, I haven't talked to this person about it. I have a good friend, uh, went to high school with him. He moved recently, left Brooklyn and moved somewhere else. And he has an interesting experience that I really want to share or I want him to share with with my audience. I don't have a big audience. I don't have a bunch of people listening, but maybe it'll be shared and maybe somebody will get a different perspective on life. Just hearing his take, just how his mind state on certain things have matured after he moved and got out of that environment. It's it's amazing what will happen and what will change when your environment changes. It's, uh, something else a lot of people don't realize, and a lot can change when you change your environment. So anyway, the Joe Rogan podcast, there's drama. Uh, some employees at Spotify want to see him censored. It's not really happening. I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan is bringing a lot of money and a lot of ears to Spotify. He brought my ears. I would not be listening to podcast on Spotify had it not been for Joe Rogan. I typically, my podcast app of choice, I'm going to keep it 100% real with you, for many years has been Stitcher. By the way, you can find the thinking on Stitcher. You can find my other podcast, Brook Noms World, on Stitcher. But I have used Stitcher for probably the better part of maybe uh, six or seven years. I could look and see, look on the app and see when I, when I initially signed up, I might do that later, but it's for me, it was the most user-friendly, um, easiest to navigate. Although things have kind of changed 
uh, lately and they kind of changed the app up a little bit. Still easy to navigate, but I don't think it's as easy as it once was when it first started. And Apple Podcasts, uh, those are two podcasting platforms that I have personally used for years. But my podcast is on Anchor, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. And there's one more that I can, I always forget. I can never remember what it is. But anyway, I digress. People want, people at Spotify, people who don't like his conversations want him censored. I grew up in a different time. Now, as a believer, I'm not going to tell you that what I'm getting ready to say is proper and correct, but this is the time I grew up in. I grew up in a time where if someone thought something about you, they said it. And there was no recourse for you to cancel that person. You had two options. You either dealt with it with anger. Well, multiple options. Some of these options, you either dealt with it with anger. Or you analyze what they said to see, is this thing true? Or you retaliated and, and said something back. Or you just let it, you know, water off a duck's back. You didn't let it bother you. Those are the ways you dealt with that when I was younger. Now... This current generation, the way they deal with adverse things they don't like hearing is they want that person shut up. Now, the reason I said when I started that statement as a believer, I'm not telling you that this is right, because as a believer, you know, I don't think it is right to verbally attack someone. Right. I, I, I don't think that's ever the proper thing to do biblically. It's not. But it happens. This this is the world we live in. The one thing I always tell my kids, there's the world you want and there's the world that is. And many people can't parse out these two ideas. In their mind, the world, the, the utopian world that they've constructed in their mind, they expect that to be reality. And that is not how life works. You can want all day long. There's a lot of things you can want and you can desire as far as the way the world is set up, but that doesn't mean it's going to work that way. That doesn't mean the world is going to conform to what you think in your brain. And what has happened is we have a, a generation of people who are led by emotionalism, regardless of the facts. And the fact that the fact is that in life, people are going to say things you do not like. That is a fact. You cannot escape that. Even, even in totalitarian regimes, you still have people that say things that other people don't like. But what, what people want is they want every idea that's not their own shut off and cut off. That is insanely arrogant and wholly irresponsible because that assumes that everything you think is correct for everyone. That assumes that you're right about everything you think and every way you feel is 100% correct. That's dangerous. That's how you devolve into totalitarian governments when people have ideas like that, when they believe that, oh, you just need to acquiesce to whatever it is I believe. Well, there's going to be some powerful leader that has the, the, the muscle to force you to accept whatever he believes and says and to shut out your own beliefs. And this is what people are calling for. And I think that's dangerous. Not only is that dangerous, I think I think it actually affects the development of a person's maturity. Part of part of what has helped me grow in life is the fact that I've I've been forced to deal with adverse situations that Full admission, I did not want to deal with. I didn't want to deal with these things. But you, there's no escape. It, there, there's this idea that life is promised to be good. And I don't know where people got this idea from. You don't even find that in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible are you promised life on this planet with absolutely no adverse situations. You don't find that. But yet people have this utopian view of what they want. 
instead of seeing the world for what it is. And I think that's how you get a lot of these people. Like, I'm sure we all we have all heard the stories of people that go to these different war torn countries or countries that are not necessarily safe. And in their mind, they're like, oh, the news media, they tell us this and they tell us that. But you can go here and you can enjoy yourself. And then these people wind up getting killed. There was a couple that I believe they were biking through Uzbekistan. I could be mistaken. Maybe it was somewhere else. And their goal was to they, they set out to prove to people that what we hear in the media about a lot of these countries and about a lot of these people is not true. It's completely safe. Everything is good. They got murdered. They got killed. There is the world you want and there is the world that is. And what you have to be able to reconcile is no matter what you want, the reality is there is something that is, and that's the reality you have to deal with. What people are making an attempt to do is they're trying to deal with this utopian idea of life in their head, and that's not reality, and that's not how things work. That presents a problem. I think that's how you, I, I think this is how you get people, like for instance, you have, I, I'm not going to make a blanket statement, but I notice more now than I did when I was younger. Right. So that's not to say that this didn't happen in my generation as well. I'm just telling you what I notice more now. I notice more now that there are many guys who cannot take rejection. Right. You you see videos of of a woman rejecting a dude and a dude going off or or, you know, trying to do something physical to the woman or what have you. You see that a lot now. Now, that's not to say, that's not to say, let me let me make this clear. That's not to say when I was growing up, dudes didn't go off and call women out their names when they was trying to hit on them and they didn't, the women didn't acquiesce. That did happen. But when I was younger, you were you were more prone to deal with rejection and keep it moving than what I see in a generation now. I remember my older brother, we were, um, we were walking to a certain spot and I can get into that, but he was, he was, you know, giving me some pointers on talking to women or what have you. And I, and it's funny because you see a lot of these, uh, relationship YouTube channels and pages talking about this stuff now. And it was like, this was, this was common knowledge when I was growing up. And I remember him telling me it's a numbers game. Because my older brother's a suave dude, and I always wondered how was he picking up all these women? Like, what was he doing? And he 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 clued me in to the secret, which is really not a secret. He was like, if you talk to thirty women, you might get two of them that respond in a positive way. The more women you talk to, the more of them are going to respond in a positive way. It's a numbers game, right? But but because of that, you accepted that reality. You got used to rejection and you understood that this is something I'm going to have to deal with. This is the reality of life. Not every woman I talk to is going to be interested in me. And more than likely, a good number of them are going to reject any of my requests and I have to keep it pushing. Because of the way we are raising and or not raising people now, there's this impression that a woman is obligated to respond in a positive way. That's a really interesting way to see life. And I, and I think it's not, not just in the dating circle. I think there's many things where people assume things are supposed to, or have to work out for you in a certain way. This is nonsense. That's bonkers. That's, but that's, yo, that's not, this is not how life works. And the fact that there's many people who believe this is how life works is how you get situations like Joe Rogan getting a hundred million plus dollar deal with Spotify and some employees who work at Spotify believing that Joe Rogan should be shut up because he's saying things that they don't like. Well, if you look at the amount of views and listens Joe Rogan gets, clearly there's millions of people who actually do appreciate and like his conversations. 
So should his conversations be shut down because your group doesn't like it? This is how a lot of people think in this in this modern world. They think because I don't like something, it needs to be shut down. That is that is that is madness on a level that I can't even comprehend again, because it's arrogance. It assumes that everything you think and everything you believe is proper and needs to be applied to everyone. That should not be. That should not be a thing. We don't we don't we don't have the concept anymore of of suffering, of discomfort and disagreement. There's this impression, this this uh, this implied uh, implied view of reality that everything should go smooth and the moment you have a bump you have to stop and you have to completely eradicate whatever brought that bump to you instead of looking back and going oh that's a bump i'm probably going to experience some more bumps so i need to toughen up and prepare for that as i move forward and that's the reality and and what many young people are seeking to do today is they are seeking to remove anything adverse. How many young people avoid adverse conversations, adverse situations because they don't want to deal with it? How many, how many young people and OP, I'm not going to just, it's not just a young person thing. It, it's a, it's a, it's a problem amongst many demographics, but how so how many people in general take medicines to avoid dealing with situations. There's definitely people who need certain medicines, right? There's definitely conditions where people need this stuff, but I wonder how many people are on medication to deal with emotional things that actually just need to deal with that emotional thing versus taking the medication to numb the pain, to forget about what they're dealing with. And this is, so I am not a physician. I am not giving medical advice. This is my opinions. And these are things that I think through. What is the difference? If I took a pill because let's say, let's say something happened to me and this specific thing that happened to me made me depressed. So I decided I am going to take these pills to help me deal with and cope with this depression. What is the difference between that and the person that drinks to do the same thing? We would call the person that drowns themselves in a bottle to escape their situations an alcoholic. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but somehow the person who takes the pill is completely fine. Now, again, I'm not a doctor. <clears throat> I'm not against medication. There definitely are people that for no good reason have certain things wrong with them, maybe chemical imbalances, something wrong in their body that um, uh, some form of medication might help with. Now, I'm also inclined to believe that there might be, um, again, I'm not a doctor. These are just things I think. I'm also inclined to believe there might be natural ways we can deal with certain things that we automatically jump to medicine for. That's just what I think, and I could be wrong. But with the with the Joe Rogan situation, what what I see, or the Joe Rogan Spotify situation, what I see is a bunch of people, I don't know how old or young they are. I don't know who these employees are. I don't know who exactly it is that has the problem. But what I see is I see people who, in my opinion, because clearly I don't know these people, I don't know who they are. But what I see, my perception, which could be wrong, is people who have not been taught to deal with adversity. So they, they hear an opinion or they hear a conversation that rubs them the wrong way, that goes against the grain of what they believe. And instead of, instead of saying, yo, I don't really like this, all right, well, I'm just going to tune into something else. That's the thing. That's the thing about 
about things like like podcasts. Okay, okay, here's the funny thing. I'm kind of jumping all around, I know. For the longest time, I'm a believer. For the longest time, many, many, many people who are Christians have taken issue with things that are on the television or on radio. The funny thing is the argument that is normally lobbed back our way is you don't have to watch these things. You can turn a channel. You can listen to something else. What's funny is why haven't these employees that have a problem with Joe Rogan's conversations taken that same approach? Because it's a high probability that these are the people that would have said the same thing to me as a believer. If I said, yo, I don't like the fact that this is on TV or that this is on the radio, they would say, well, don't listen or tune it out. If I was working for Spotify and I really had a problem with, with something Joe Rogan was discussing, and let's say I had to re review his content or I had to listen, I would just go to my boss and be like, hey, look, look here. That man does what he does and he has the freedom to do it. I would prefer not, you know, dealing with him because X, Y, and Z handle that on a personal level. That's really dealing with the situation, dealing with adversity, understanding that this is life. People are going to say things I don't like. Completely shutting those people down is conditioning me for failure because what is conditioning me for is the moment I have a problem with anything, I just need to shut it out instead of dealing with it. Anyway, thank y'all for joining. Y'all know what it is. Stay frosty, people.